Hello everybody and welcome back to another mini review. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but today we're going to be looking at Contra Operation Galuga, the latest entry in Konami's beloved Contra series. That being said, this wasn't actually done by Konami, but rather WayForward, who I'm definitely familiar with mostly thanks to the Shantae series. However, they have previously redone other classic titles like with Double Dragon Neon, DuckTales Remaster, the recent Advance Wars remakes, and they even did another Contra game in the past with the fourth one for the DS. So these guys definitely seem to have an idea as to what makes a good arcade style video game. You know, the ones that are extremely hectic and frustrating and they love to steal your quarters along with your university degree, but you still have that tingle on the back of your brain that tells you, come on, just one more time, you can beat it. Operation Galuga has been out for almost a couple of months now, and I want to say thank you to Konami and WayForward for giving me a code to try it out. I will admit, though, that I am kind of out of touch when it comes to the newer Contras. Most of my experience with the series is with the first game and Super C on the NES, as well as Contra 3 for the Super Nintendo, so uh, I haven't played any of the other newer games in the series, like uh, Hardcore for the Genesis or uh, Rogue Core, that uh, twin-stick shooter that uh, seemed to get a lot of flack when it came out, uh, and I haven't even played Contra 4, the other Way 4 game, so forgive me if a lot of these uh, additions that I talk about have been done in previous Contras. Contra games and I just completely miss them. Not that it matters a whole lot anyway, because Operation Galuga is in fact a reimagining of the very first Contra. You can even abbreviate the title to Contra OG in case that wasn't obvious enough. Oh, you clever folks at WayForward, I see what you did there. Unlike Rogue Core, where it was a twin-stick shooter, however, this one goes back to the basics by making it a side-scrolling platformer, where you're going through obstacles and shooting everything like a madman with some of the greatest weapons in video game history. One thing that was maybe a little bit hit and miss with some players was the new art style, compared to the 2D sprites that we're used to up to now. I think I see what they're going for by mixing in realism with cell shading, but if I did have one minor criticism with the game, it's that this art style can be too busy at times and somewhat hard to see projectiles. Like, some of these objects don't really have much in terms of shadow or depth, so it kind of makes it tricky to decide whether or not these things are going to hit you. The characters do, however, have some new maneuvers that, to my knowledge, haven't been done in any other Contra game before. One of these features is using the analog stick to give you a 360 aim, like in Metroid Samus Returns and Dread, which is really useful and much easier to kill things with. But I wish there was somehow a way to do it with the D-pad and not feel uncomfortable, since I play a lot of 2D or 2.5D games with direction buttons that have a little more accuracy to them. You can still play with the D-pad if you want to, but you're limited to only 8 directions in classic Contra fashion. That's great for veterans, but not so great for those who haven't been back to the series in a while like myself. You can dash as well if you want to, either on the ground or mid-air, but I hardly find the need to do so unless I'm playing challenge mode, and it's especially not needed now that all the characters are able to double jump. To be a hypocrite for a second, I did end up using the dash a lot during the 7th stage because there were just way too many obstacles, too many enemies, and I just could not deal with all of them at once. The double jump and the dash does make for some interesting platforming, however, and the guns, as I mentioned before, are all back. All from previous Contra games, so you got the flamethrower, the laser, the homing missiles, the crush missiles, and of course the super sexy spread gun. And just like Contra 3, you can have up to two weapons at a time, and can swap between them whenever you want. Only now, the weapons can be upgraded by picking up a weapon of the same type. You remember the spread shot, right? It's a Contra classic. Fires in multiple directions, covers a fair amount of ground. It's great. But then someone in development was like, wait, what if we change the firing directions from 3 to 5? And then somebody was like, Jenkins, that's goddamn brilliant. Put it in the game. Like, it's absurd just how powerful you can make some of the weapons in this game. I deliberately had to skip some of the weapons because I just found the others much more useful. And there is no worse feeling than accidentally getting rid of a weapon you had so much fun with and instead get the crappy machine gun. You are able to get it as long as it's within reach, but good luck doing it with the two bike levels because you move so goddamn fast. For any weapons you don't like, though, you can always sacrifice them for an overload attack, with each one providing different results, like the laser stopping time briefly, or the crush missiles absorbing most projectiles. Again, I don't find myself using this too often, but it's nice when it's there. Finally, you do have a reserve weapon you can call for whenever the meter below your portrait is full, sort of like in the new Super Mario Bros. games. All of that sounds really useful, right? And it is, but it's a Contra game, so of course it has to be hard as balls. Yeah, I don't think it would be a Contra game without a tough challenge, and this one is no exception. Even with the new health bar system that lets you take a couple more hits, it's still tough. Not to mention you can buy various perks in the perk shop after acquiring points. How do you get points? By basically playing the game. And the fewer benefits you give yourself while playing, the more credits you earn. Some of the perks, especially after completing story mode, can be pretty damn expensive too. So you kinda have to make do with what you have for a while. 
The perks thankfully don't break the game too much though. Most of them are all shared between the characters, though the characters themselves do also have some specific perks between them. For the most part, the characters do all pretty much play the same, apart from the last two, Lucia and Stanley, who control slightly differently to the others, and one or two of the weapons don't act the same way either. My favorite probably had to be Stanley, because he can hover for a few seconds while still firing his guns, as well as having a grappling hook and can cling onto ceilings. I get a bit too reckless when I control him though, so I should probably use someone else. Some of my favorite perks probably include giving you a spread shot at the start of the level, as well as not degrade your weapons whenever you get hit. You can, of course, also use perks during multiplayer. Again, it wouldn't be a Contra game without the ability to play with someone else. This time, you can actually have up to four players to co-op with. I had my brother Ju join me for this one, and it was a great time. Multiplayer is one of the best things about any Contra game, and Operation Galuga is on that list too. We kind of struggled with the second and third levels because they were not only fairly lengthy, but so much shit was happening on screen. It was just as well we only had two players, because I could not imagine just how frantic it would have been if we had four. There is a checkpoint system to help with that, but it can only do so much for our sanity when we kept dying over and over again. We ended up playing on the arcade mode, which is basically the story mode, only we don't get the cutscenes. Yeah, believe it or not, Contra has a story mode. These scenes go on for a little while too, and it's not all that visually interesting, honestly. Which would be fine if the story had a bit of tongue-in-cheek humor involved, but it doesn't, and as a result, the narrative is not gripping or silly enough to be entertaining. I feel like it really could have done with some satirical jokes on the over-the-top 80s action movies this series is inspired by. Then again, what do we expect? It's a Contra game. Nobody cares about the story, we just want the run-and-gun gameplay. There's a total of eight stages to go through, and it took me maybe less than three hours to finish overall, so I don't think it's really all that bad. Plus, as I said, there's arcade mode in case you don't want the story, and there's also a challenge mode to put you on the same levels but with different stipulations, like reaching the end fast enough or beating a boss with limited ammo. Yeah, a Contra game with limited ammo, imagine that. And yes, in case you're also wondering, the Konami code does still exist in this game. You're given 573 credits for doing so as well. Not sure why that number specifically, but it also unlocks a perk that gives you 30 lives when equipped. Although, like some of the other perks, it's pretty expensive. I really don't know why there were some reviews giving this like a 6 out of 10 or whatever as well. Like, what the hell? That, that's It's a Contra game. What do you want? I mean, I haven't played Contra Rogue Corps, but I can only guess that Operation Galuga is already way better than that. At least this one actually looks and feels like a Contra game. And that, folks, is pretty much all I have to say about Contra Operation Galuga. And yeah, it's a fun game. I don't care what the critics say. It's good. I don't know what these people were expecting, but yeah, they didn't get the game they wanted. And yeah, well, boo to them. It's Contra at its finest, I think, especially after Rogue Core. Uh, and I think you all should pick it up, too. Uh, if you like, you know, run and gun gameplay and side scrollers and all this sort of thing. And even if you played Contra back in the NES and Super Nintendo days, this is a really good addition. And so, with all said and done, uh, apologies for the rambling there at the end, but yeah, I'm, I'm having to do this really quickly, unfortunately. But I will see you all next time, and yep, take care. Hey, we made it. Hey, we did it. We haven't lost a live. We've got a double spread shot and double homie missile. And I got a double laser. Life is good. Okay, all right. No! What was that? I forgot. Oh, okay. What was that? <laughs> Come on. No, let me have it. Let me have it. I've yeah, already yeah. got.